Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Rohn at Just Statewide News Service, jbiztechvalley.com. And as you can see now, he's columnist for the Jewish press. And I talk about in my column about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't as the case may be. <laughs> but uh, speaking of government, we now have uh, with us uh, the the top dog, uh, top cop, you might say, and uh, top prosecutor in Albany County, David Soares. He's the Albany County District Attorney. Welcome back to the Jewish well, Thank you for having me so. again. I guess I didn't offend the last time. I was <laughs> and I didn't offend because you came back, you know. <laughs> so we're good with each other. Okay. Thank you. If Thank anyone you. I want to be good with, it's the DA in Albany <laughs> County. <laughs> so... Uh, T tell me what's new in the DA's office. You've been in, you've been in office now about uh, 12 years? Yes. So. Uh, you know, what is, what is interesting now is, is that I seem to, uh, I'm very re-energized, um, and um, I think it's the challenges that we're experiencing right now as a country um, and what we're seeing in the calls for criminal justice reform. These issues are so important today. They're being discussed at the highest levels of uh, political office. It happens to be one of the number one issues during these Democratic primaries that, mm -hmm. we're, that we're hearing about. And so, um, it, you know, it, it's, it's sad that we're at this place where there are members of our community that don't feel like they're justly represented in the criminal justice system. And, um, but it also provides us with an opportunity to fix that which is perceived to be broken. Mm -hmm. um, and in criminal justice, you must have the full faith and the confidence of your constituents before you can, you can do your legal work. aid, though. I mean, I mean, people can have, I mean, you don't feel they're um, being just, uh, just, uh, just, just legalized uh, services? Well, I, I think what we have a disparity of, of uh, quality of services, I think. Um, and I'm not just speaking in terms of here in, in the state of New York, I'm talking about this in terms of, of a national issue. Mm -hmm. I know that there are certain parts of our country mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, people are going into the system um, at arraignment and other very pivotal points of, of a criminal justice process and there is no representation mm -hmm. and they're, really? they're making decisions for themselves that quite honestly have collateral consequences. And so all of these things are sort of culminating and, and bringing about this feeling, but um, it, it is an opportunity uh, to, to, to sort of uh, reset the table and, and to move forward with a, a new system, you and know, I'm glad to be here having the opportunity to provide some... You know, it's just it's interesting. I had a friend who was lawyer in a different state, so it's not around here, but um, he was an ACLU member, and he actually, you know, then became from a defense attorney, became a prosecutor. So you think a prosecutor, oh man, you have a yeah. gun on you, you're ready to throw everybody, hang them, you know, hang them up. And I said, you know, man, you're, you're pretty liberal. And, you know, what are you becoming a prosecutor? He says, no, I could do better as a prosecutor because I can determine, you know, who's really right or wrong. And, you know, I can make those decisions even before they come to trial. And, and I think you hit on something very important. I think the traditional image of what a prosecutor is, right now we're challenging, you know, those opinions and, and, and those images. Uh, those of us who are in this business and, and, uh, and, and some of us are doing it because we want to and we believe that's the case, but many of us are also doing this because the times are just calling for it. Mm -hmm. The person who appears at, at arraignment being charged with, uh, with a crime may not have uh, committed that crime because of the of, of the interest in committing crimes. That person may be desperate, may be a person who has some mental condition or some other health issue. And so we have to be much more uh, diverse in our application of the law. We have to have a much more thorough understanding of what people are actually presenting with as opposed to being able to throw mm -hmm. the book at them, you know, so to speak. To dovetail to that, you know, you've been on the show a few times, thank you and I guess you like us enough, but um, we were talking about the um, Occupy Albany mm -hmm. last time, and we have many government officials on, Mark and I, and a lot of DAs, and one of the issues uh, was that, uh, I don't know how many, maybe I'm sure you know, but I don't remember, but there were so many people arrested by the police, so then, the, you know, the balls uh, in your court, 
of course, being the DA, to prosecute them. You refused to prosecute, even though the police obviously arrested them with a crime. The judge wanted it to prosecute, and you refused. And, you know, we talked about last time, another DA said that was a landmark case, that a, is a DA has the right to just say, I know the police want, arrested him, obviously there's a crime. The judge wants it and say, no, I don't feel that this is an issue. Well, there, there are two, two primary issues here. I mean, one being the fact that we happen to sit uh, in a, in a, at the seat of government here in, in Albany, New York, and therefore if people cannot uh, voice their concerns about the management of their government here in this particular county, then you have to ask yourself, where can they do it? Mm -hmm. um, secondly, you know, we have our share of, of street violence. We have our share of, of high-profile, uh, um, sophisticated crimes that take place. And when you're, when you're managing a district attorney's office, you don't have an abundance, an unlimited amount of resources. You really have to carefully direct your resources in places where you think you'll get the greatest public safety outcome. And the idea of prosecuting protesters is just not one of those things where I thought would, would be a, a positive benefit for us in this community. So we did have to litigate these issues and we went to the highest court in the state of New York, uh, which um, thankfully they agreed with us in, in believing that the district attorney does in fact have it's the Christ. discretion it's, it's to... Soars v. Carter, yes. isn't it? Yes. That's like going to be legendary. You're going to be your name is going to be out there. Well, not for reasons that you not for reasons that you'd want. You'd want your name to well, be out no, there for for the other fact things. That you succeeded and you were victorious. You'd want it. You know. You well, well, as we were little, talking a little bit off air, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's not only important that as a sitting prosecutor you are defending the the interests of your office um, right now. You have to protect the institution as it moves forward. So the day will come when the sun will set upon my time right. and will rise with, with, uh, with, someone, with else. someone else. And so you want to make sure that the institution is protected. That's and right. that's part of the reason that goes into the thinking of taking on a case like well, that and litigating. I, I'm sure a lot of people who are arrested are now saying, oh, I hope he doesn't prosecute me. I hope he doesn't <laughs> prosecute me because well, you have that, now you have that authority where you don't have to prosecute. Well, pe peaceful <laughs> protesters should not should no, never have right. to no, voice just, their, <laughs> their uh, opposition to government and under the fear that they're going to be prosecuted by right. that same government. The other thing that I would add uh, to, to this conversation is that you know, there have been millions and millions and millions of dollars that have been expended in the Occupy litigation, and there are lawsuits that are still being litigated now. Albany County has not experienced any of those things, right. and that's primarily because of the decisions that were made mm -hmm. early on about how we would react and treat uh, member, our citizens. You know, yeah, talk about crime again. Again. crime again is just, again, we have so many DAs, and they say the number one thing is this heroin and crime. Mm -hmm. And actually, the sheriff came on and he says, listen, Rabbi, you want me to just pick up uh, drug addicts? I can fill up my jail with drug addicts. But, you know, listen, they need help. So, again, um, number one, let me hear your view about the heroin epidemic. We can really say it. And number two, you know, again, using discretion where a guy's just a drug user and, you know, I mean, they're down and out and they need help. They don't need a jail sentence. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. You touched on it a little bit earlier, the, the significance of where we live as a region. I think that the general and the, the prevailing attitude towards people who reside here, citizens of Albany, is that we live in Smallbany. It's a small place, and therefore, you know, not a lot goes on here. But, but in our world, and I'm sure the sheriff and the chief of police and the state police uh, could speak on this as well, but Albany is an area that is a destination location. It, it is at the center of our state. It connects New York City to Montreal. It connects Boston to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are at this crossroads here. And there are so many transactions that go on right here. And so the average person who's sitting at home isn't going to see the number of cases that actually come through. In fact, the only cases that they'll hear about are the ones that the media report on. But there are literally thousands of cases that come through this area. And one of the things that, that is the, a growing concern 
is the transaction, the, 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 the uh, transportation of heroin and other illegal products that come through our mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And we work very closely with all of our different agencies uh, within this community, local, county, um, state, and federal. Mm -hmm. But now we've even gone one step beyond that, and we've established these relationships with our downstate partners so that when we, in fact, do a bust here, we're reporting it back to the location that it originated so that we're providing that law enforcement agencies with enough information to, to allow them to get it at the source. How, how many assistant district attorneys do you have on staff? We have uh, 38 prosecutors. Wow. In the office. 38, and that includes your chief and deputy chief? Yes. Because I know that you have them listed on your website. Mm -hmm. so do you think why are they important to be listed? I, don't, I mean, I just didn't know. I just wasn't sure why you singled them out because the number, what, two and three people? I don't know. Well, we've, we've, years ago we decided to commit ourselves to, uh, to uh, uh, what's called vertical prosecution where each of the bureaus were going to develop an expertise in a particular kind of crime. So, for example, our financial crimes unit would have a leader there that is the expert for financial crimes. Right. Special victims would be the same as well, well as major crimes and street crimes. So what we wanted to do was create um, leadership in those units, expertise within those units, so that any agency that we're dealing with, law enforcement or even the citizenry, would be able to look at our site um, and, and understand our structure mm -hmm. and be able to direct their concerns to the individual. Yep. Um, and, and I did look at your site and it's very user friendly, yeah. uh, but I did want to, um, you know, the Kings County DA, uh, Ken Thompson, mm -hmm. uh, I happened to catch up with him in Coney Island. He was doing a uh, community event and he brought the bureau chiefs and it was a long table. Yeah. <laughs> he had a lot of bureau chiefs, very few Indians, but a lot of chiefs. <laughs> uh, I was wondering, and, and you know, they all had an interaction with an audience. Do you, would you consider doing that in Albany County? We, we do that, we, we do that. We just had an event, uh, uh, last mm -hmm. week, where um, you know we had an Easter egg hunt for our kids in the uh, in the yeah. city, um, and the week before that, we were in the St. Patty's Day parade. And yeah, but I'm talking about an, a forum where oh, a forum where we're hosting right, and the residents can ask each individual bureau chief or put a face with a name, you know, other than you know when you're not arrested, uh, put a face with the name of someone. So if you have uh, a special victims unit case uh, of a resident, you know, has something happen or elder abuse that they know the person. I would, say, I would I certainly do that. I would be open to doing that, and maybe even having a co-sponsor for an event. Well, um, I, I know that your slogan is fighting crime, building hope. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's important to you. So I think building hope, you know, part of that is to connect the uh, residents in the county with you know, who the people are in your uh, It's so important that you say that because one of the things that we strive and we go out of our way to do, and I, I, I apologize for mistakenly believing that my Easter egg event was what you were referring to. No. Um, <laughs> but one of the things about the building hope component of the office is getting our folks internally to understand that the only way that we can succeed in cases, in some of the most difficult cases, is if we have people who are willing to come forward right. and testify and provide, you know, their time uh, to do so. So but it's they, important that they see us, right. not when there's just sirens or there's right. crisis. And they, they need to put a face with a name to make a connection so that, and get a business card so that when there is a problem, they have a name and number to call and, you know, they, That is so critical. Um, I know that Ken Thompson did that. I experienced it. I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah. And I would, you know, maybe that's an idea that we're germinating here. Well, we, so, I, one that I'm open to exploring with you. And the other um, issue, you know, that he has a lot of people uh, down in Kings County. You know, a lot of a lot of attorneys. He even has a counsel to the district attorney, mm -hmm. which I'm thinking you have all these attorneys in the office, why do you need a counsel to the district attorney? You already have enough, you know? It's a, I guess if I was a comedian, I could make a better joke about it. But, <laughs> you know, it just didn't uh, seem right. But anyway, I- That's a very know, different function. I'm sure it yeah. is, but <laughs> still, it's counsel. It's, <laughs> it's like in the assembly, they have the committee on select committees or some, you know, they have, uh, 
the, uh, well, let me see if I could pull it out. But anyway, they, they have a committee on committees, and they have a chairperson <laughs> who's, the, who's the chair of the committee on standing committees. <laughs> and I'm just like, you really need that? <laughs> you know? So, all right. Anyway, he has a Civil Rights Bureau and Hate Crimes Unit. Yep. Uh, Conviction Review Unit, Crime mm -hmm. Strategies Unit, Domestic Violence Bureau, Elder Abuse Unit, Forensic Science Unit, Special Victims Bureau, uh, Human Trafficking, Alternate Alternative Programs, and Mental Health Court Unit. I mean, so, there, and then there's Trial Divisions, there's Investigations Divisions, there's DA Action Center. I mean, d d how specialized do you have to get, and how do you combine like the Rensselaer County DA says that he combines elder abuse in with the Special Victims Unit. Mm -hmm. How do you combine these because you don't have the same type of staff and finance funding that he does? So. We, we call it something, we all might call something a little bit differently. You know, for example, um, you know, we have a public integrity unit and our public integrity unit spoke, focuses specifically on governmental officials, law enforcement, mm -hmm. anyone in an official capacity who is alleged to have abused their, their office. Um, and, and that's combined with our major crimes unit. Okay. So we don't have the personnel to be able to create standalone units like a civil rights unit where you may have, you know, 40, 50 people designated to, but we will have that function that is housed within right. one of our units. In, in our office, for example, our special victims unit will handle domestic violence cases, rape cases, um, child oh. sexual assault, elderly abuse, and animal cruelty. Uh -huh. You know, because we find that the, the um, the victims are, are vulnerable, and when you're dealing with vulnerable victims, you're dealing with some of the same um, uh, dynamics in terms mm -hmm. of who the perpetrator, you know, is or are. Um, but we all have a, a, a different form of specialization. You know, the, there are communities like uh, uh, across the river in, in Rensselaer County where there's less people. Um, usually, there is a you know a population um, that that will uh, that will factor into how many people you really need. But, you know, oftentimes a smaller office, the more diverse the work that each of the assistants are engaged in in order to fulfill their obligations as prosecutors in that community. Uh, are you a fan of uh, not using Narcan to help uh, heroin abusers uh, come out of an overdose? I I'm a fan of using whatever we can to prevent people from dying, which is what's happening in our communities today. Um, there is no... But does that include, you're a fan of Narcan, you think that's a... Good I, I think there, I, I am a fan of Narcan. Um, what I'm suggesting to you is that once the Narcan phenomena was, was uh, publicized yeah. and everybody jumped on the Narcan bag bandwagon, there seemed to be this collective sigh of relief that we have discovered the miracle cure and what I don't want is for the public to be operating under such assumptions because Narcan is more of an immediate response and part of the solution, mm -hmm. but there needs to be a much more um, uh, thought out um, process now, to we, we address We did talk heroin. to uh, the, a district attorney who has, seems to have a minority opinion that uh, he's not a fan of Narcan and he said that, uh, you know, if these people want to you know, overdose and com and basically commit suicide. Uh, let them. Why? Well, otherwise, you're bringing them out of their stupor, out of their overdose, and they're going to go right back into society, do what they're going to do, and you know they're going to be on social service rolls, and they're going to be a burden in society, and they don't really want to live. So you know, why use Narcan? I really, I heard this. This is on tape. <laughs> this is not background. This is not <laughs> talking to me off to the side. You know, so I want to know what your reaction might be. Uh, I, I would say that I, I would say that that's awfully insensitive, and in, in the uh, um, ad addiction is a disease, and there are people who, you know, what do you say about that young, that parent who brings that that teenager to the hospital for, you know, uh, a twisted ankle that they got during you know basketball or football, mm -hmm. and the doctor. You know, provides uh, you know a pain a, a, a pain management medication in the form of an opioid, and that kid takes the op opioid as was prescribed by a physician, and develops an addiction. 
nice. and, this, and the years later is scoring heroin mm -hmm. on our street. That wow. kid didn't ask wow. for that addiction. But that could happen. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. And, you know, for the vast, um, for the vast majority of people who are addicted to heroin at this moment, it's not like it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. There are so many people whose stories began with a story just like the one I talked about, where there was a legitimate need for that opioid, and they received that opioid under the, under the supervision of a treating physician, and now find themselves in this, in this space yeah. wrestling with this addiction. And, you know, the problem right now we have in our country is that we have more people dying of an overdose due to an opioid than we have uh, in, in car crashes. Wow. And that's, that's unheard unacceptable. Of. That's unheard of. Wow. So Narcan is one of those things where if it can help, we, it's something that we have to you know, continue to pursue. But we have to do something a whole lot more radical than that, which is getting our insurance companies to begin covering people for the kind of the kind of treatment that they need. Mm -hmm. um, I think where we are right now is that we're treating heroin and opiate addiction like we are treating alcohol addiction or cocaine addiction. It's not the same drug and it's a different um, orthodoxy altogether. Mm -hmm. And so we just have to get people there and, and companies and institutions there so that we can save more people. And uh, what is your position on Raise the Age? We are very much in favor of Raise the Age. What we are not in favor is the, uh, the proposals that are... The means um, to the end? The, yes. Yeah. The, okay. the, uh, um, what we, now what, you say we, you mean the District, the District Attorney's, Attorney's Association. Association. But you personally. I'm I'm in favor of raise the age. Absolutely. The way the way the governor proposed it. Not in the way the governor is proposing. Where, personally it. speaking, where would you uh, differ and and want to, you know, tweak? I think 16 and 17 think, year old. I don't think you want a wholesale, you know, different bill. You just want to tweak it. Yeah, we do want tweaks. Uh, right now, in its current form, in the governor's form of the bill, a 17 year old kid who's a senior in high school can stand up, punch his math teacher in the nose. And uh, that kid will never see the inside of a, of a courtroom because he'll be sent to probation where his case will be adjusted. So you have to ask, well, what happens to that teacher? What happens to the school's ability to discipline the kid? And what is it that we, we're going to do to inform someone else that this kid is a, has a tendency towards violence? So I don't like that form. What, what I do like is the form of, of uh, raise the age where if a kid makes a mistake, and commits a crime, there's automatic, um, uh, there, there would be an automatic uh, coverage yeah. for that kid. So if he's, if he's being held accountable, uh, he's not going to receive a permanent scar on his record, right? So there'll be an automatic sealing uh, order there. However, if this kid should do something again, then we're allowed to go back and revisit the original charge that had been sealed. So I, the DA's association, by and large, favor raise the age. Mm -hmm. Where we have a difference of opinion is uh, what the current proposals are. We want to see a, a proposal that addresses victims' needs, that also addresses the needs of those kids. And, and what about the, uh, oh, what was it, the uh, juvenile, the, the juvenile uh, centers that these kids get sent to? I mean, aren't, isn't there enough? Juvenile, I mean, it, it, juvenile centers where these kids could be sent, are being sent to uh, now? They, they, they well, can be, and as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what the great... Aren't they making th Hudson Correctional Facility yes. into this? And the great thing that the governor just did, uh, actually I think it was last, uh, the last session was he signed an executive order um, demanding that, uh, ordering that the Department of Corrections send all kids to... Um, a different facility and that they shouldn't be housed with adults. That's the greatest starting point I think you can have with addressing the issue of raise the age. So um, I, I do think that there are current places that we have right now that, you know, could be transformed into um, a place where kids can, in fact, be sent to. As it stands right now, we only see less than 5% of the criminal population are kids that are 16 and 17 years old. Hmm. So I, I think New York State has made great, you know, uh, we've gone about creating that reform 
even without the, the Assembly and the Senate and the Governor taking action. Um, but I do think that if we are going to see movement and raise the age, it's got to be sensible and it can't compromise public safety. Uh, do you find, Rabbi Simon mentioned earlier in the program about uh, a defense attorney becoming a prosecutor. I, I see the Cheryl Coleman example where she be, was a prosecutor and became a defense attorney. Do you see examples in Albany County where uh, defense attorneys become prosecutors? Oh, I do, and I, and I don't think you have to you have to subscribe to no, one curious. or the other tribe. I yeah. think you have to have a profound love for the Constitution. Mm. You have to believe in the, in the fundamental fairness of, of uh, and, and, and work to bring about fundamental fairness in the criminal justice system. Um, I, I think that the orientation is, is really one that is set in, you know, the values of do you want to protect the entire tribe or do mm -hmm. you want to protect the individual, and, and that's the only orientation. Well, the entire tribe would be the judicial system, as in, you know, the integrity of the judicial system. Well, I, I see it more, my job, I see it more as protecting the people in my neighborhood, protecting the people in my community, whether that community is in the inner city of Albany or right. in the hill towns, okay. or, or, or uh, I, I am such a fan of, of this county and where mm -hmm. we live, and mm -hmm. it's so beautiful and its diversity of you know, topography yeah. as well as people. Um, we're one of the few areas where you can have um, the, the feeling of a, a suburban community like Gilderland, right. or go, go to, to a Thatcher river Park. town, or Thatcher Park, right. or, or, or you know, go to the hood. Or go to the hood, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's all within you know, right. a, a, a little bit of a distance away. And so, Less than a half hour. Exactly. Right. I know. I, I'm a big fan also. And um, I did want to find out from you, if you have a public integrity unit, mm -hmm. uh, why aren't more legislators being prosecuted through your office as opposed to the U.S. Attorney's office? I'm just... First of all, if, yeah. I, if I had a million dollars, I'd give it to you right now because that is the one question that I've, that I've waited for someone oh. uh, to ask. I, I will say this, when um, years ago when we prosecuted uh, the former state comptroller, Mr. Yeah. Hevesy, right. that was a case that was referred to my office right. by at least two other law enforcement agencies because in those days it was just something that nobody well, really Chris did. Well, Chris Callahan right? is the one who... Chris is the one who brought the right. case, but he had brought that case to the attorney general prior to myself. He'd also brought that case to the United okay. States Attorney prior to okay. bringing it to my office. <laughs> so we investigated that case and we prosecuted that case. Mm -hmm. I think what some of the other law enforcement agencies saw in that prosecution was the fact that there was an appetite for coverage of these cases. And this was top mm -hmm. above the fold, uh, yeah, headline sure. oh, yeah. you know, grabbing mm -hmm. uh, cases to the extent that if there was a case that, that, that existed right now, which was a public integrity case, I don't think I could even get to it before one of my counterparts who in the past had referred those cases to me oh, really? now take those cases. And so um, with the Southern District of the United States, right. uh, um, uh, Pre certainly, you know, uh, they have the ability, they have the manpower, sure. and they have the resources. You know, thank you, Preet. A job well done, great service to the people of Albany really? County. So this is not something that you feel you should be. Well, it's not something handling. that I feel I should be. I can. It's just the fact that these days, whenever there is a public integrity case, usually there are, are uh, prosecutorial agencies fighting over the case, right. as opposed Territorial. to as opposed yeah. to before, where they were just looking to give it all to me. So, <laughs> you know. Well, there's plenty of there's plenty of other cases to do. Yeah, uh, but but Preet's not running for office. You're an elected official. I never. I mean, isn't this something that you should be saying? Look, I gotta, I gotta show my constituents. I our public integrity unit is doing something. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean. No, yeah, that's a know. good question, and I and I would say that it, you know, dangerous is the prosecutor who seeks out cases for political gain, mm. um, because that would be a weaponized service, server of justice, uh -huh. and that's not something that you want. Okay, because I just want you to know, and I'm going to give you a little present if I can find it here, <laughs> of my, uh, a list of my uh, legislative bad apples, and <laughs> all the <coughs> legislators who have gone to, uh, who have been prosecuted, uh, 
and you know they and any one of these could have been going through your office so um, and if I take a minute I'm sure some of them have okay yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, you know just end on that note where you can take that back and that, that's yours to keep <laughs> we'll give you that for homework because we're out of time and it was really good talking to you and just informing the people of Albany County, you know, what the office does and how you're working with it. And I think you're really doing a great job. I truly do. And a lot of people, that, of course, I meet so many people I in the area. I have so many more questions to ask you. Well, you know, that's what I'm saying. You give your so homework, gonna, you have to do it again. You have to have you back. So. Uh, you know what? I, I'm honored. And I love, uh, I love coming here and I love spending this time with you. And you always seem to ask the <laughs> questions no one else will. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Okay. Well, well, thank much you very success. much. Keep thank on you. with success.